Hey, what's up everybody? Chris Souders, Slunger Cat Outdoors, back with you again this afternoon. And as you guys can see behind me, we're on the banks again. I'm kind of I'm kind of liking this uh, Tuesday night on the bank style fishing, uh, getting back to the roots. Real simple, easy fishing. Uh, a lot of people can do it. I'm, I'm digging this. So if you guys are liking what we're doing here on Tuesday nights, make sure you leave me in the comments, let me know for sure. But uh, if this is your first time joining the channel, Thanks for joining. I'm glad you guys uh, stopped by tonight. Hope everybody is well. If you can hear me and see me well, uh, let me know. Give me that thumbs up. Let me know you guys can hear me and see me good. And uh, we're gonna get started tonight. Uh, I'm gonna get some baits out here in the water. As you can see behind me, um, you know, got a got a spillway here at the local lake where I'm at. And the reason that I chose uh, this place tonight was because I kind of feel like it fits a lot of people's area uh, of what they can fish and where they can fish so um you know I, I wanted to pick this this is the same lake that i was at the last time just on the opposite end uh, this is the spillway in, end they're draining it down they this is a uh, flood control style of lake so you can see there's a bunch of water uh, rushing out and then we just got like a small pool of water here uh, that goes down into the creek uh, creek is real small real narrow uh, real shallow creek but uh, this, you know, gives a good opportunity in the springtime, and I'm going to tell you guys why here in a minute. But uh, let's get some baits in the water. So today we're using the uh, medium heavy Warrior Cat rods. I don't need to cast real far, so I don't have the 10 foot rod with me today. These are a, a reel that I bought back in the summertime just for channel cat fishing. Um, Magda reels. They're they're Akumas. They're good reels. Um, especially for you know this style of fishing like channel cat fishing uh, it's got a nice little line counter on it so you guys you know, I like to drag baits a lot so you know, I like to be able to, to see but now I will warn you guys and you guys liable to see this for casting uh, these reels are horrible they have the uh, self engaging reel on them so if you try to cast them too hard they will actually engage itself and and you about lose the rod but uh, on the business end, we got 30 pound slime line, a sinker slide down to just a regular 100 pound barrel swivel. We got, I believe this is 80 pound um, Andy Monster Leader line. Got a Demon Dragon, D85 Diachi, 5 aught with some uh, fresh cut shad on there. Let's get it out there, see if we can't catch one. We'll call this Corona Grocery Shopping. I casted that one right out there, kind of, uh, it shallows up where that water's rushing out. I'm gonna leave that one set right on the end. I got a three ounce sinker, which is way overkill for this, but it's on that sinker slide. I'm just gonna lean it up old rod holder down here on the roof. Now I turn my clicker on because I got a feeling if I do get one, it's going to be whenever I'm least expecting it. Now on this one, this one I got the same rod, same reel, uh, same 30 pound slime line, <clears throat> but I got a float on it. This is I believe an angry cat's float. Uh, not sure. I believe I got this at Catfish Conference, but I ain't for sure. But it's got a a, a nice little uh, light stick holder for floating at night. Just a regular slip. It's like a pool noodle style. And then, <clears throat> and I got a double hook Kentucky rig going. First hook we got a D85 with some shad down to a uh, nice little shad head. And then about an ounce and a half of weight. And I'm not going to cast that one out very far. There's a, there's a little bit deeper, calmer water over on this side. And I'm going to let it float around in that deeper water. I got it set about from the bottom hook to where the float is. It's going to be, let's just check it see. About eight foot deep. All right. 
right. Got them out there. We fishing. We are fishing. Man, it's a beautiful evening out here this evening. Hope that with all the craziness that's going on in the world today with uh, the coronavirus, hopefully you guys are absolutely doing okay. Uh, I personally had a little bit of a scare. Uh, I ended up getting sick last weekend, and uh, thankfully it was just nothing but a uh, head cold and, you know, a cough. Never did end up getting anything worse, so, so we're good there. But hopefully everybody else is around the world. Hopefully you guys, uh, you know, the ones that do have to work during this, I'm one of those. Unfortunately, I, I have to work. Well, it's not unfortunate. I'm glad that I'm able to work during this unlike some of you guys that uh, don't have the choice, but the nurses and the, uh, the police force and doctors and truck drivers and railroaders and barge captains, all you people, uh, you know, from the dollar store to the uh, White House that have to work right now, I want to say thank you guys for doing what you guys do and helping keep this country uh, going at this, this dire need of things. It's actually warm enough, I'm gonna get this coat off. So earlier, uh, you know, I was talking about, you know, why this makes a good spot uh, this time of year and what happens, especially at here where I'm at here. This is Jackson Lake down here in Oakie, Ohio. And what happens is, you know, in the, in the wintertime, they will drain this lake down and they will push a lot of water down into this uh, little creek. But that pushes a lot of other fish down here as well uh, through that through that discharge and over the spillway and they kind of get trapped up here in this deeper this deeper hole right here and during the springtime you can normally come down here and catch uh, you know a couple little channel cat maybe a bow fin um, <clears throat> sometimes you can come down here and catch a few crappie bass uh, normally all year long you can come down here and catch bluegill and and uh, small bass and small crappie and stuff like that Uh, yeah, Ozark, uh, yep, uh, a couple from Columbus ended up buying the uh, old boat, Slunger Cat. So uh, until, until we get the new one, uh, you know, I'm going to be fishing off the bank and be fishing out of uh, my dad's boat for, right, for the time being. And, and I got some other trips planned that I'm going to be going with some other people. I do have two videos uh, put back that I need to edit and get out to you guys for you guys to watch. Uh, good videos at that. Thought I had a bite right there. You guys watching two rods. That's my fancy rod holder. Those are not monster rod holders. Those are look like old cherry root or gum root uh, root rod holders right there. I've caught some nice channel cats out of this little hole back in here. It's uh, it's treated me well over the over the years. <laughs> Somebody before I started actually told me to use onions. Uh, if you guys have ever used onions for channel catfishing, let me know. in the water. Getting ready to go. We're getting ready to show you guys a, a bait, but uh, had a little had a little bite. All right, so somebody was asking about uh, bait. 
This is a gizzard shad. This is actually one that I, I normally don't freeze them, uh, but I froze a few just for cases like this where I can come down here and uh, you know take my daughter out fishing or something like that. <coughs> but just chunking these up and uh, into small chunks. Little chunks like that right there. Now that's probably one of the best, one of my favorite parts of it right there is the guts. I really like, really like the guts for, especially for these channel cats. Well, that didn't take long at all. And we got a pretty good crowd on here tonight. Tell you, with everything going on, there ain't a whole lot better of a safer place than I know of than a backwoods place like this. There ain't nobody around and just me and the birds and well, Jenny and Corey up on the hill walking around. And the squirrels and the deer it just don't get much better than this right here. Maybe we can put a fish on the boat. Now, if you guys just joining in, uh, you know, as you're going through this, make sure you're asking questions. Put at Chris Souders. Uh, that way it'll pop up and I can see it a little bit better on, you know. <laughs> them channel guys got me nervous. I'm gonna step over here just a little bit so you guys can see them rods. <clears throat> But yeah, uh, somebody asked about ch uh, creek chubs. Um, you know, a place like this right here would be, you know, it's a it's a really really good place for creek chubs. You know, you got a you got a natural creek coming up here, and you know, uh, it it would be a great place for something like that. Crawl dads, creek chubs. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's been a while since I caught one of these ugly fellers. <laughs> now I don't think these are good eating. And they uglier than sin. That's called a bow fin. They got a really hard, like, scale skin on them. Let's see if I can get his mouth open here. Because they got teeth, and I want to show you guys. He just pooped and got it right in my mouth. All right. You guys can see them nasty teeth. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Now, these things, they're in this lake. Fair size. This one's probably, I don't know, two and a half pound or so. We'll get him back and get back out there. He took a headpiece off that. Huh. I've never had one. I've never ate one. But uh, if you say they're good, I'll, I'll take your word on it. I'm going to cut up some baits here real quick, and I'll get right back to you. What I'm doing, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut that gut pocket out. 
just like that, and I'm gonna fillet each side of it. So we cut that gut pocket down. I'll just go ahead and cut it off. Now that's a good bait right there. You could cut that up in two little chunks. And then I'll just fillet each side. Whenever you get done filleting it, all you got is the backbone. Trim that off. Old double hook Kentucky rig strikes again. Now I'm gonna put that head, it's a little bit bigger head this one. I trimmed it up a little bit. That's something you guys can do. You guys can see how I cut the head straight off the back there. That kind of, you know, makes the presentation of that bait small, but you still got everything inside of it uh, as far as flavor. Get a fillet back on the top there. <clears throat> And since we already cut caught one, I'm gonna cut some bigger fillets and see if we can't see if we can't get bigger. There we go, big old chunks on there. Yes, sir. Whew. Some of that old shag gut gizzard right there. That's nice. If you guys just coming on, we are at a discharge below a small lake in a little back part of this this uh, spillway trying to catch channel cat we haven't caught channel cat yet but we did catch both in them things uglier and uglier and sin yeah buckeye catfishing i'm using uh, uh red diachi d85s i'm using the uh, five eye make sure you watch that bobber right there right oh, there Wherever you guys are from, we got a pretty good crowd on here tonight. Leave it down in the comments. Let me know where you guys are from. Here in Ohio, we're not doing too bad. Uh, somebody asked a question um, about the Kentucky rig and why you guys are uh, chiming in where, where you guys are from. So the Kentucky rig is a rig that is very, very uh, productive for anchor fishing, uh, down line uh, drifting, um, and some people even drag them. Uh, I don't prefer to drag them, you know, but anchor and drift, drift fishing, very productive. Uh, it's great to be able to cover, you know, two different water depths, a couple different, you know, baits, different sizes of baits, things like that. Uh, you can really break down um, some stuff quicker with that rig. Mount Orb, Ohio. Boy, that's not too far. Middletown, Ohio? Wisconsin? Man. 
How's the uh, how's the virus stuff out west for you guys or Wisconsin and and places like that? You know, how are you guys faring out there? All over the place. Yeah. And also for you guys that are uh, in my general area that that like to you know like to see more bank fishing, you know, leave some questions of what you guys would like me to do. You know, while I'm doing these little uh, bank live sessions, or if you guys have a an idea of some information you want me to share about about this, leave it in the comments so that we can uh, you know do more shows like this. So as the days continue to get a little bit longer. Uh, you know, we'll be able to do more of, you know, more of this. Well, it's nice to be able to come out here and Yeah, I do. I, I never, you know, uh, whenever I go bank fishing, you know, I don't do it a lot, but it's something that I want to start doing more. Um, you know, now, especially now that my, my little girl's getting, you know, old enough that she can come with me and and uh, enjoy this kind of stuff. You know, I definitely want to start doing this more, but some bank fishing rod holders would be nice. Uh, I never, I just always throw, you know, as you can see, throw them down on a root or something, but. But I have seen those Cat Force ones and they do they do look pretty nice. Yeah, it just ain't much better than this one. Tuesday afternoon, get off work, come and enjoy long sleeve weather. You know, it's nice. You know, uh, something else I want to talk about too, while we're, you know, during this uh, corona, you know, craziness, I'm just going to call it craziness, is try to support little companies, American-made companies as much as you can. Uh, there's a lot of people that are going to be struggling after this. So, you know, anything you buy, anything you can buy, uh, you know, try to. Yeah, yeah, Dieter, it would go viral if a big flathead. Yeah. I think the chances of us catching a flathead here are pretty, pretty slim. Mike. Yeah, you, Mike Lewis, you're absolutely right, buddy. I do need a, I need a campfire and some hot dogs and hot dog buns and some mustard. I would be in there like, yeah, peas in a pod if I had that. But they gotta be the cheap hot dogs, Mike. You can't buy them high dollar hot dogs. You gotta buy the Bars bologna hot dogs. I like them hot dogs that they make out of, uh, you know, pig's hooves and the rear end of the tails and stuff like that. You get them. Yeah, Patriot, uh, small, you know, you bring up a good point. Small bluegills, small live bluegills do make great uh, channel cat bait. That's for sure. I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move a couple rods around here real quick. See if we can't catch another one. Now, the good thing about this, you just got a nice little bobber stop. You can just slide that baby right up to whatever depth you need. I'm actually going to shallow it up a little bit, and uh, that way it'll float around a little bit more. It went out there and got bottomed up.
Good thing about a place like this, you don't have to worry about casting very far. Real hard flip, you'd cast all the way across here. Oh yeah, it's drifting down through there pretty good now. Let that drift down through there. Rusty, buddy, I would love to. I would absolutely love to come out there. You guys, uh, some of you guys may know it, some of you may not, but the Mississippi River is, it's got a dear place in my heart. I love it. And uh, you guys absolutely catch some good fish out there. I'm telling you. Between you all, uh, Ryan Casey and Stacy Gaston, Joey Kirby, and Aaron and and all the everybody that does the live feeds on Facebook, man, you guys kill me. Whew. Everybody at work and you guys out there catching fish, I'm telling you. <clears throat> Need some onion on top of that hook. Uh, I got plenty of onions at the house, and I'm gonna try that one of these nights. Uh, Clinton, I am actually, I, I actually work for CSX Railroad, buddy. Well, there is a pretty good crowd on here tonight. I want to thank everybody for coming out here and watching. <laughs> you got that right, Rusty. Yeah. Everybody that does live feeds, that definitely helps people at work. You know, that's nice to uh, kind of get you through the, the craziness sometimes. I am fishing a small spillway uh, below a, one of my hometown lakes down here in, in Jackson County, Ohio or Oak Hill, Ohio, excuse me, Jackson Lake. But it's just a spillway that they, uh, this is like a flood control style lake so you guys can see the water uh, coming out, you know, out that spout down there. So they, it's not coming over the spillway right now, but they just got it coming out, uh, shooting out and they'll drop, keep that lake dropped. But sometimes that will force fish down here into this small pool and kind of, I don't want to say hem them up, but kind of hem them up, you know, they'll stay in this deeper little pool before they go down to the, down the creek. Tell you what that bank gets much wetter it's gonna be really 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 slick i'm allowed to bust my hind end <laughs> john miller uh got a load of toilet paper headed to pennsylvania buddy i hope nobody finds you before they before you get to wherever you need to be Toilet paper is like a gold mine right now. Thank you, Lennon, uh, Union Cleaning Services. Thank you very much, buddy. I appreciate that. And I appreciate everybody that's uh, come out here tonight to watch. Uh, make sure you guys are leaving your questions uh, in the comments as they're going by. I'm trying to trying to read them. Hopefully tonight is kind of kind of gets you guys. I do. Uh, in case you didn't hear, uh, Dieter, I, I actually I ended up catching something uh, last weekend, but thankfully it was just like a ear infection and, and a head cold, and I didn't have the that coronavirus that I th I don't think I didn't have a fever, so we're good that part. 
but hopefully hopefully you guys are enjoying this this evening uh justin yes so you know justin that that's a good question about the bobber stop so there's a couple different styles you know the style that come with that bobber which is just the uh it's you know the string style that you just got to tighten up now those will come loose they'll work loose and they can really be a pain in the butt but then bass pro actually sells almost like a rubber bead um, and depending on the reel you use will depend on how you know whether you can reel them down into the reel or not but but they actually uh, they'll have like a wire that runs to them you put your line through and then you just pull the rubber bead over top of the the line and it works works pretty good. Another way you can do it is a rubber band, uh, double a rubber band through and cinch it down. But now that doesn't work real well if you got to set it real deep uh, because the rubber band doesn't like to go through the eyes real easy. Uh, yeah, there are some crappie uh, in this lake. They're not real, real big. You know, most generally you're gonna catch crappie out of this lake that are, you know, 10 and a half inches is going to be a good crappie. Um, unfortunately, you know, the people around here aren't real easy on them. You know, anytime they catch one that's nine and a half inches, 10 inches or so, it's, you know, it's gone. But you can, I like the long line uh, for crappie up here. It's, it's a good place to long line for crappie. Well, I was hoping to be able to catch another one on here. Uh, Stacy, this is actually uh, there. This creek now, this particular spot, uh, I've not really caught a bullhead out of, but this creek actually has bullhead in it, um, and I have caught them out of that creek. But this particular spot, I have not. Now, for people that are wondering what a bullhead is, for me, I call a bullhead a yellow belly. I think I think that's what hopefully that's what you're talking about is a yellow belly, but uh, that's whatever that's whatever you know that's what I call them. Yeah, Ozark, it, you know, up there actually that's farther farther away than I think what it looks like, uh, you know, from here. But up up right up towards the rocks, it's, it gets really super 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 shallow. Uh, there's a lot of bluegill and stuff up there, which there's channel cats up there too, but there's a small channel that comes right down through there and then it comes down and, and dumps into this little bit deeper hole. This, this hole will usually be about 10 foot or so. Um, where we're gonna get a lot of rain and there's a lot of water, it comes off the spillway and kind of rushes right into this corner and washes it out. Hey, for, uh, Justin, how is the fishing been up at Hoover? Uh, I've just seen something pass by about about Hoover. I've had a lot of people asking me, you know, about Hoover and, and the blue cats and <clears throat> uh, things like that. How's the fishing been up there? I know there's been some, some fish caught, but uh, I've got a project that I'm getting ready to start working on, and it's actually my dad's bass tracker, 17-foot uh, bass tracker. It's got a 9.9 horse motor on it. I'm gonna put a, uh, I'm gonna put a transducer and stuff that will fit the sonars that we use. I'm gonna put it on there, and I'm gonna put another troll motor and and some rod holders. And I'm coming over, so that place is is really starting to get you know pick up with some good fish, and I'm I'm ready to come up there and and catch some. <coughs> I apologize for the dry cough. Yep, there's a there's a couple guys, Justin, that I've seen fishing off the pier up there, and uh, you know it, it really surprises me the fish size that they're catching off that pier. You know they're uh, they're catching twenty, you know thirty pound fish off that pier, and that's really 
phenomenal. I mean, uh, you know, for no longer than that lake has been being stocked. That's really impressive. Uh, you know, I never thought about that, uh, Angela and Chris. Yeah, you guys, uh, if you guys go to fish Hoover, now that you got the, the Slunger Cat, uh, I think you guys can still fish it, but I think that, and Justin, um, one of you guys that fish Hoover a lot might be able to help me out with this. Uh, you either gonna have to take the prop off, I believe, or keep the motor trimmed up. I'm not for sure, but uh, somebody might be able to help you out with that. Well, I tell you what, it's time for me to move spots. So I want to thank everybody for watching tonight. We had a good crowd on tonight. Uh, if you guys are liking this Tuesday night bank tackle talk stuff, you know, as long as the weather is uh, fortunate enough, hey, I am all for this right here. There's nothing better than a Tuesday night after work catfishing session on the bank somewhere. But uh, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you guys think. And as always, man, thank you guys for watching. Leave the com leave your questions in the comments. Um, also, uh, as I see him flash by, it reminded me. Um, I want to put something out there for somebody. If for anybody that watches this channel, make sure you go over and uh, check out Dieter Melhorn's channel. And the reason I say that is because he is being affected uh, dramatically during this situation. And I'm sure that he would appreciate everybody going and checking his stuff out uh, to help him out, drive his numbers up, maybe make a, a few more dollars on his videos and stuff. So go over, check his channel out, subscribe, hit that thumbs up. He's been doing a lot of videos and a lot of uh, uh, content here lately. So, you know, make sure you go over and help him out. Make sure you guys are going small town, small business, USA right now, support what we can in the States everything you guys can. If you got somebody, a loved one in your family that needs prayer, uh, you know, anytime, but during this time, make sure you guys hit me up, send me a message. I would love to pray for you, pray for them or anybody that uh, needs it. But uh, keep this world, keep this country in your prayer right now. And uh, till next week, I wanna thank you guys for watching. God bless and we will catch you next week.